In this module, we're going to cover the life cycle of a Boomi process. Some of the topics that we'll cover are deployment, environments, managing extensions, and we'll consider some special situations. Some use cases like hotfixes and different scenarios we know that you will encounter. Our goal for this section is to review development lifecycle concepts and components. Uh, we'll dig deep into extensions and environments and integrate Boomi tools and techniques as well. We also want to reinforce these concepts with a few hand-on exercises that will be available for you. So some of the questions we are looking to answer are, how are environments best used in development? What is the role of extensions? How can the development environment be leveraged in special situations? And why is this an important part of risk management? It's important to understand how Boomi addresses development lifecycle from development to runtime. So we need to have a rich understanding of the Atomsphere platform features to reduce risk and support management of complex development. It's good to know some solutions to specific use cases in the event you come across a special situation like a hotfix or rollback. And one of the key goals is to minimize and manage risk in our processes and integrations. You're likely familiar with many of these concepts, but I want to take a moment to review them nonetheless. So when we say deployment, we're talking about attaching a process to a runtime environment, which then gets executed by an atom, atom cloud, or a molecule. The environment is a dedicated area for advanced testing. It is a container for a particular runtime, uh, which allows us to set classification and extensions. And extensions are configuration settings within your process most commonly connection information. So this might be URLs, login credentials, a database name, information like that. And this is specified at deploy time instead of at build time. And so the environment extension then, this is the setting value for those extensions that are set at the environment level, which makes those values available to multiple processes deployed to that environment. A hotfix is an update that's applied to systems which are live and running in production rather than in development. A parent and child process defines a relationship between a master process and the sub process. Schedules are applied to a deployed process dictating when the process should be executed. Process properties are name value pairs that can be used to store specific information to assist with an integration. A persisted process property is the ability to persist or remember a property value across subsequent executions. A rollback means essentially to restore a process or atom version to a previously defined state. A deployed process acts as a snapshot of that process for source control, and it can be used to roll back. So let's talk about deployment first. A process gets deployed to an environment and not an atom or runtime. The process can be redeployed to the same environment whenever you have a new version of that process. Processes can be deployed individually or in bulk if necessary. Once a process is deployed, it has a deployment history, and that history does allow us to roll back to a previous deployed version of our process whenever needed. The process and all reference components get bundled together during deployment. This includes child processes. You do not deploy individual components or shapes, but instead the entire process gets deployed and redeployed. Now I said that we deploy the process to an environment, so let's take a look at environments. The definition for an environment is a user-defined grouping of runtime attributes used to manage deployed process. Now if that makes sense to you, that's great, but if not, you can think of an environment as a container, and it contains the runtime, which is the atom or molecule or cloud, and it also contains the processes deployed to it. The environment does not do anything except contain the runtime and the processes and a very few configurations. So these are the roles and some environment extensions. But they are very important to the development lifecycle in Atomsphere. 
The runtime is where the schedule is set and other runtime attributes are associated with the runtime. Here is a recommended development life cycle setup, but yours might be different depending on your own needs and considerations. We start with the build tab on the far left and then we have three environments. Dev, which has a single atom. Test, which uses a molecule cluster for end-to-end -end testing on small hardware. And production, which is the full production hardware running a molecule, clustered runtime, and high availability. The integration starts as a process in the build tab and developers build out the process using unit testing in test mode. The process is deployed to the first of three environments in the lifecycle, which is our dev environment. So the main process along with any child processes are bundled and deployed. Within the dev environment, we can continue to test the process. And in this scenario, the dev environment has a single tenant atom attached. We can also test web service listening connections in our dev environment that we cannot test in test mode. So we will come back to this graphic a little bit later when we discuss promotion of a process. But now we want to take a look at extensions in the lifecycle. Extensions are properties within a process that are able to be overwritten at runtime with your process. Most often extensions are used to override connections in an environment to ensure that processes access only specific endpoints. So for example, test endpoints are in the test environment, only access the test database or test applications. Similarly, in the production environment, the production extensions would point only to the production applications. Extensions must be marked or set up in the build tab in your process before it's deployed and those extensions are set for that process. Extensions are only used in an environment once a process is deployed to that environment. Processes deployed to the same environment and that share a property such as a connection property will share the property in that environment. So if you have a database connection that uses an extension, which is being reused in three different processes, and all three of those processes are deployed to the test environment, when you set the environment extension, it will be set for all three processes. So you don't need to worry about managing the same property in multiple processes. Some uses of extension, as we mentioned before, are to manage connection endpoints in different environments but you can also change or update parameters without redeploying a process. One strategy that Boomi recommends when working with extensions is to have a set of connections for each endpoint in the build tab that point to production endpoints. These may be needed to test authorization and to import profiles. So once these steps are confirmed, you can then swap out those production endpoint connections for another connection that acts more like a test or a sandbox endpoint. So we keep one connector per endpoint with extended properties as the deploy connector, and perhaps maybe even putting deploy in the name is a good suggestion there. And all the credentials would be set to null, and you would swap to this before deploying, so that when it's once deployed, it will use the credentials that exist in the environment, not in the process itself. So revisiting this illustration with a focus on extensions. In the build tab, the developers create a process with certain properties that can be extended and overwritten in each environment. And you can also do connectivity testing there as well. Then in the dev environment, we could have the Salesforce and Oracle connection going to a test data source and our own process property, which could be a debug flag, might be set to true. In the test environment, we can use extensions to point to a different Salesforce and Oracle endpoint. And once again, we are not editing the process. Instead, we are defining the values through extensions. Lastly, the production environment can utilize extensions to point to the production endpoints of Salesforce and Oracle. Atoms live in environments, and so they are closely related to them, but do some different work. And so let's detail the distinctions a little bit. Atoms are attached to environments. Processes are deployed to environments, not to atoms or runtimes. Environments control runtime properties through extensions. An atom can execute any process which has been deployed to its environment. 
And scheduling or executing a process is done by the atom, not the environment. An environment will typically have only a single atom attached to it, although technically it can have multiple atoms in some specific scenarios. Uh, so one example of this is a group of atoms attached to an environment instead of a single molecule cluster. That is a special use case. Uh, environments are designated as test or production classification, which corresponds to the class of connection licenses used. There is a different cost for test and production licenses and some different functionality as well. Again, licensing is not based upon the number of environments. It is the number of unique connections times the number of atoms deployed to.